everyone. Welcome to our democracy webinar. Uh, my name is Katie. I'm the development director at the Democratic Party of Oregon. Um, and we're so excited to have y'all here. Um, you are all just, you know, muted and your video is off. Um, and if you have any questions, um, you can use the Q&A uh, question and answer uh, button thing that should be at the bottom of your screen. Um, and then I'm just going to turn it over to Casey Hansen. Uh, Casey is the chair of the Democratic Party of Oregon. Take it away. Oh. I got you unmuted, Casey. Okay, thank you very much there. Technology, sorry about that. Hi, everybody. I'm Casey Hansen. I'm chair of the Democratic Party of Oregon, and happy Earth Day to you. It's perhaps pretty symbolic that we're doing this webinar on vote by mail on Earth Day, in that it's on us as voters to ensure our elected officials seriously address climate change. So with that in mind, I am so thrilled we have so many folks here with us today to hear about vote by mail. And I'm so glad that you will hear directly from Senator Ron Wyden about his efforts in making vote by mail a national reality. We'll have a little bit of time for questions at the end, but if you have a question for the Senator, please keep it to the topic of vote by mail. And to get us started, I wanted to give you a little bit of history on vote by mail. Um, the Oregons have been voting by mail exclusively for more than two decades, a full generation, and it's strengthened our democracy every step of the way. Oregon was the first state to go full vote by mail, voting it into law in 1998. We're pretty proud to have been the trailblazers of such a successful and effective voting system. But we'd actually been using vote by mail in many lo local elections for more than a decade prior to that 1998 vote. In 1981, the Oregon legislature approved vote by mail as a test for local elections. By 1987, most Oregon counties were using it for their elections and vote by mail became permanent. In December 1995, the first federal election conducted, conducted exclusively by mail was Oregon's special primary election to replace Senator Bob Powell, who had resigned. And immediately after that, in January 1996, the general election for that Senate seat was held and the first senator in the nation elected, elected exclusively by mail was our own Senator Ron Wyden. In February and March of that year, North Dakota and Oregon both held the country's first vote by mail presidential primaries, and Oregon's turnout was an impressive 58%. The 1998 Oregon primary was actually held traditionally though, at polling locations, and turnout was a record low of 35%. Further, 41% of that election's voters cast their ballot as permanent absentee voters, and two-thirds of that election's voters were all forms of absentee voters, making Oregon the first state to conduct a polling place election in which more voters voted absentee than actually showed up at the polls. That really set the stage to make vote by mail a permanent fixture. And in November 1998, Oregon voters approved vote by mail by a 69% to 31% landslide. Ballot Measure 60 was a citizen's initiative, and it codified vote by mail as our singular way of voting. Polling locations were eliminated. And in classic Oregon fashion, fashion the, the petitioners that brought the measure to Oregon voters did so with an all-volunteer force of signature gatherers. In 2000, our first all mail-in presidential election, more than 79% of registered voters cast a ballot. In the 20 years since, that figure hasn't fallen below 80%, dramatically outpacing national turnout. And in 2004 and 2008, two presidential years, Oregon's turnout was a whopping 86%. Vote by mail is common sense, easy for the voter, and very popular. A 2003 University of Oregon survey showed that 81% of respondents favored vote by mail, 85% of Democrats preferred vote by mail to traditional voting, and 
percent of Republicans favored vote by mail. Additionally, 30% of, of those survey respondents said they would vote, they had voted more often since vote by mail was instituted. So what's been happening around the country since Oregon set the bar for vote by mail? Right now, five states conduct full vote by mail elections. Washington began in 2011. Colorado affected it in 2013. Utah introduced vote by mail in 2013 and now have 98% of its electorate voting by mail. And Hawaii has come on board just last year affecting vote by mail and their 2020 elections will be conducted by entire mail. 21 other states have laws that allow full, by, full vote by mail for local jurisdictions. All states will mail an absentee ballot to certain voters who request one. In two thirds of those states, any registered voter may vote absentee without offering an excuse or reason to need an absentee ballot. In the remaining one third of those states, a reason is required. Some states offer permanent absentee ballot, a permanent absentee ballot similar to what Oregon had before we went full vote by mail. Once a voter asks to be added to the absentee list, she or he will automatically receive an absentee ballot for future elections if she, so, she or he requests it. In November 2016, 41% of the nation's general election voters did not cast their ballots on election day, but either voted by mail or voted during an early vote voting period in their state. 70% of the total ballots cast in the 2016 general election were cast in states that either conduct vote by mail, have early voting, and or accommodate for no excuse absentee balloting. So what do voters think of vote by mail today? In a recent survey, a strong majority of all voters favor vote by mail, 58% to 39%. Now that 58% figure represents those who think we should move to vote by mail elections permanently. An initial 9% for a total of 67% in voters surveyed believe at the very least we should vote by mail this coming November. Finally, vote by mail is not just popular, it's secure. As vote by mail ballots are received in elections offices, trained county volunteers match voter signatures on, a, on the outer envelopes with actual voter signatures on file using either an automatic, automated signature database or by using actual voter registration cards. If the signature matches, the ballot continues through processing. If the signature does not match, the elections office contacts the voter so the voter can correct the problem. The best of all, of course, is that with vote by mail, there is a paper trail. And as Republican Secretary of State, the late Jen Dennis Richardson said, said, you can't hack paper. We are excited to explain to the nation how we vote, and they're listening. They are ready for a safe, reliable alter alternative to what so many American voters experience when they're trying to vote. Instead of standing in long lines in miserable weather, or now in the midst of a deadly pandemic, Oregon voters are accustomed to receiving our ballots two and a half weeks before the elections. The nation voters want the same thing. We can tell folks in other states how we plan to vote. We can tell them how we pick a specific day to pour over the accompanying voters pamphlet, read about candidates, read about initiatives, and complete our ballots over numerous cups of coffee. We can then explain that once our ballot is completed, we can simply drop it in the mail or drop it off at any one of hundreds of official drop-off locations. There is never a line. In Oregon, we're pretty proud of our state and we are proud to have trailblazed vote by mail. We know as Oregonians that vote by mail is secure, efficient, and cost-effective. We know as Oregonians that vote by mail is an extremely user-friendly way to vote. And these, uh, these days, vote by mail is also very safe. And as Oregonians, we're proud to support nationwide vote by mail. Now, I'd like to 
introduce our Senator Ron Wyden, but he might not quite be on yet, so I will refer you to the slide that's now showing. If everybody would please take a look at that. We'd really like your help on this. There's a petition that's available on our Facebook page, on our Twitter account, or on our Instagram account. Please share the petition with five friends. Post yourself about national vote by mail, about the vote by mail petition on social media. Email folks, let them know. And remember to use the hashtag vote by mail and hashtag national vote by mail in your posts. We really appreciate that. Great, um, and I just put in the chat, um, the actual, uh, it's like a support petition, um, is dpo.org slash national vote by mail. Um, so that is where you can find it. Um, great, and um, Senator Ron Wyden should be on in the next couple minutes. Um, if people wanted to just chat in where they're coming from, um, I just kind of wanted to give a little shout out to um, where folks are um, are listening from, that'd be great. I think we mostly do have people from Oregon, but we have um, a few folks, I think, from a couple of other states. Um, great, we've got Claire and Liz um, from Lake Oswego. We've got Peggy from Bend, Oregon. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it looks like we're ready to go. Beverly from Oh, Beverly in Florence. <laughs> cool. Awesome. We've got a lot of great Sandy River, Mount Hood, Portland. Awesome. Dundee, Grants Pass. All right. I'll let it, <laughs> give it back over to you, Casey. All right. So are the senators with us now? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, he is. Okay. Yeah. yeah, well, let me give you a proper introduction here, Senator. You're folks, the bell. Folks, many of you know Senator Ron Wyden is a longtime champion for Oregon values, from protecting seniors and consumers to advocating for the environment and health care access. Senator Wyden has been getting it done in Oregon for getting it done in Washington, D.C., for Oregon and for the nation since 1981. He's now taking the battle nationwide for vote by mail. And if anyone can get it done, it's Ron Wyden. Senator, thank you so much for joining us today. Please take it away. Casey, thank you for that inflationary introduction. <laughs> and I'm going to make this a filibuster-free zone because the first rule in the Senate ought to be friends don't filibuster friends. <laughs> first of all, I think I want to join all of the Democrats across the state in thanking you for always stepping up. And particularly this year, when we've got so many important elections ahead, the fact that day in and day out, you're hoisting the flag of the Democratic Party is just so incredibly valuable. So uh, I think right now, all the Democrats across the state are giving Casey a collective, incredible shout out to a wonderful person for all she's doing to advance our values. And what well, I can tell you, you um, Casey, is right now I'm sitting in our kitchen a couple of blocks from the Capitol. And what I have been doing for weeks on end is just going back and forth, back and forth between this kitchen, basically, and my office in the Dirksen Senate office building where we're trying to push as hard as we can to get the help, whether it's unemployment benefits or small business assistance out across the state of Oregon. And then also because the Senate Finance Committee where I'm the ranking Democrat gets much of the COVID legislation, we're starting already to work on the fourth um, package. One issue though that we wanna talk about tonight especially is that I think we saw in Wisconsin a spectacle during the last election that we cannot have repeated all across the country this fall, where voters, in effect, 
are forced to choose between their health and voting. And so what I have been telling my colleagues, we had a program on it today, the Senate Democrats, it is time in America to COVID proof our elections. And we in Oregon know how to do that. We know how to do it because we are never going to have in our state a spectacle like those incredible lines that we saw in Wisconsin. Now, in 2002, I introduced the first vote by mail election, the first proposal to actually let everybody in America vote the Oregon way. And back then, it was kind of an academic proposition. You had lots of professors writing their political science papers, debating who would benefit from turnout, who would uh, benefit from party. And what I used to say is, it was really interesting to watch the professorial tweed jacket set debate all of these theories about vote by mail. What we know today, it is no longer theoretical. This is a basic question of public safety and we're all praying that it's not the worst case analysis but with that kind of worst case in a pandemic we could be faced with either voting by mail or not voting at all so i have proposed taking the oregon approach nationally we're trying to build coalitions with the civil rights community and disabled advocates and uh, others, and we picked up a lot of support. We also know that it is a real challenge because lots of folks really like the idea of going to the polls. We respect it. We also wanted to get a ballot in the mail, the Oregon way. I've also been having debates with a lot of Republicans uh, Donald Trump, always a model of consistency, has said that he thinks vote by mail is a horrible idea, but guess what? That's how he votes. So I think we Democrats ought to just say if it's good enough for Donald Trump, it ought to be good enough for the rest of America. I've also uh, made a demonstration. We put it up at our Twitter feed, it's our pinned, uh, pinned tweet that shows how we vote in Oregon. And contrary to Donald Trump's absurd theories, when I was voting in my kitchen in Southeast Portland, there were not thousands and thousands of people all over the kitchen and my living room. We've also tried to point out how strongly we Oregonians feel about protecting the integrity of the vote. And I point out that the late Dennis Richardson, certainly a very conservative Oregonian, actually wrote Donald Trump in 2017 to tell him that fraud was virtually non-existent in Oregon. So we have seen state after state postpone and delay their primaries because of the coronavirus. The legislation that I've written with Senator Amy Klobuchar, she is the senior Democrat on the Rules Committee, which is in charge of elections and election procedures. Our bill protects the right to vote no matter where anybody lives and brings vote by mail to every state. So I want to throw it open to um, the question and also take note of the fact that this is another special day for Oregonians, and that's because it's Earth Day. And we wanted to protect our treasures long before anybody thought it was cool, our land and our air and our water. And one of the things I want to get back to is what I call river democracy. We offered up a proposal to add wild and scenic rivers from every corner of the state. We asked, actually asked 
Oregonians to nominate them. We got nominations from school kids to seniors. So when we beat this virus, we're gonna go back to that. And we are gonna beat that virus because we're Americans and that's what we do. We're strong, we work together, it's the Oregon way. And especially right now, the Oregon way is the way Americans ought to be able to vote. So Casey, big thanks. And let's throw it open to a couple of questions. Okay, uh, we've got, got a bunch that have come in. So thank you, Senator. Well, what I'm going to do here is we have a bunch of the same question. I'm gonna uh, synthesize them together. But basically, uh, what will it take specifically and logistically to get vote by mail to pass nationally? Well, Casey, okay, as we talked about as Oregon Democrats before, you know, political change isn't very often trickle down. It's really bottom up as people get involved at the grassroots. And now it's getting a lot easier because as opposed to 2002, when a lot of states had all kinds of requirements even to get an absentee ballot, you practically had, a note, had to have a note from your mom, your dad, your priest. You had to have a note from everybody in the neighborhood in order to get an absentee ballot. That's not the way it is anymore. Basically everybody now has some arrangements for an absentee ballot. So what we're doing is basically upscaling the status quo. We're not reinventing the wheel, we're building on what we have. And just in the last couple of days, bright red Nebraska, Nebraska has had a record number of requests for absentee ballots. Somewhat lighter red, Ohio has a Republican governor who really supports mail-in voting. The same is true of Maryland with Larry Hogan as Republicans. These Republican leaders hardly qualify as members of some kind of liberal conspiracy that Donald Trump is arguing is gonna be the end of Western civilization. Okay, so we're ready for the next question. Um, from uh, Bill Bradbury. Well, Bill Bradbury, a yeah. legend for other Oregon Democrats. It's great to know that Bill is participating and what a role model he has been. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and as I scroll here, <laughs> I lost the question, but basically is asking, um, what concerns do you have sir, for certain states um, to make the transition to vote by mail in time for the general election in November? Bill, Bill's question is, is very good because obviously some states have a bigger challenge. And the fact is we Americans can move in a hurry when something's really important. And I don't know much that's more important than voting. So what Senator Klobuchar and I were able to do in the first and the earlier coronavirus packages is secure $400 million in order to pay for postage and to get machines to count the ballots and the like. We're gonna keep pushing until we get it up to $2 billion. And Bill Bradbury is a former great Oregon Secretary of State knows what this is about. And so Bill, the whole point was to say, look, this is in 2002 when I introduced the first vote by mail. We just got to build on what we have today. Kim Wyman is the Republican Secretary of State from Washington State next door. And so we're making that money available in order to pay for the transition. Could you address the states also that only allow an absentee ballot unless they have an excuse? I am yeah, either. I think I can get you that list, and there are some that require a, a notary republic and all this kind of stuff. We can get you that actual list. But what's important right now is all the states and Republican officials are saying to themselves, 
We watched what happened in Wisconsin on television. Already yesterday, there were reports that a number of people, and I'm not going to pretend to be a physician, but the medical the health commissioner described this, that there were people who were infected who had been involved in election you know, activity in Wisconsin. And so the real key here is, is to make sure people can vote safely. And we'll get you the list of the rules for each, uh, each state, but certainly the number of states that have moved to much easier absentee voting has um, increased. And clearly what we're seeing is if we put the grassroots pressure on, local officials are not going to stand up and tell people, you're going to have to vote in a way that's going to put your health at risk. This is a safety issue now. It's safety above all else. Yeah, and we saw that that kind of backfired on Wisconsin Republicans last week. Wisconsin, Wisconsin elected a number of progressives. The big race in Wisconsin was uh, for a Supreme Court uh, Supreme Court seat. Went to a Democrat. Right. Um, we've got a couple questions about how you're integrating various bills uh, together in support of vote by mail. Well, there are at least kind of three bills. One, uh, the bill that Senator Klobuchar and I have is the most sponsors. There's Senator Warren's bill, a good bill that would authorize even more money. We're focused on $2 billion. She wants to have $4 billion. And Kamala Harris's bill, which is also a product of reaching out to a number of important civil rights groups. So Senator Klobuchar, myself, Senator Warren, and Senator Harris, we are very, very close to each other in terms of bills. And I'm sure we would support theirs and they would support ours. Uh, that sounds like a pretty dynamic team, I would say, our, our modern vote by mail adventures. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, if, um, if you're, allies or Senator Klobuchar, Senator Harris, and Senator Warren, those are my partners. I'm running with the right crowd. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, what can we do to help get vote by mail to pass as grassroots activists? What, what I tell grassroots activists is we'd like you to be election security Paul Revere's. We'll get to everybody, the states where we have the senators who might be swing votes. We'll get to everybody, the states that have the most burdensome requirements, that notary republic situation. And then what I tell everybody is if you have any friends or somebody you went to school with or you were in their wedding, or maybe you were in a summer camp and you stole their tuna fish sandwich, but you apologized profusely. <laughs> Call them up and say, hey, we've been friends forever. I've never called you about politics before, but this is important. We gotta make sure everybody can vote. I mean, picture this, Casey. I was looking in the Wisconsin lines. In those Wisconsin lines, were older people. I'm sure some of them were veterans. And they were walking up to their polling booth where they were met by other veterans. Should we really ask veterans, older veterans, who risked their lives for our country to risk their lives again to vote? Yeah. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. And also, apropos of statistics and the like, about 60% of all the people who work the polls are over the age of 60. So you're talking about voters who are vulnerable and poll workers who are vulnerable. Yeah, and apparently they've uh, discovered some uh, evidence of uh, uh, COVID outbreaks and new 
new cases um, after they went and voted last week. So that's a sad commentary as well. Um, how, which states, which states do you believe have the most burdensome voting requirements? And this, this touches back probably to the, the states that require, ex, uh, you know, 70 pieces of documentation to vote by mail. How do, yeah. how do we address that? Uh, still grassroots? It's grassroots. Um, you look, for example, at a number of the southern states where they've had these um, barriers. And yet, Stacey Abrams, who is arguably one of the most dynamic young Democrats in the country, I don't know if any of you yeah. uh, have heard her speech, Georgia legislative leader, she's saying that they're starting to talk about the opportunity to get mail-in ballots. Now, I'm sure that they'll come with a lot more restrictions when we see the details. But I just listed Nebraska, record number of absentee ballots. Ohio, a Republican governor, very sympathetic to mail-in. Larry Hogan of Maryland, uh, a Republican governor. Kim Wyman, a Republican secretary uh, of state from the state of Washington, our uh, neighbor. What we're seeing Maybe this is a, another fact as it relates to this debate. Mitch McConnell has been the single biggest barrier to voting reform in the country. In all the time I have watched him in public service, he has never once voted for anything that helps people vote. What I believe we'll do as we reach out to people in these states where there's a very red orientation and people are wondering about their safety. Yeah. If we can generate the kind of grassroots involvement, I think we're up to. I think we'll have those folk going to their senators and doing it now and saying, I want to be able to vote by mail. I want this option. And we pretty much disproved the theory that this is an area tainted by fraud. As a lot of Democrats know of the grassroots, we had a case a few years back where a poll worker tampered with two ballots. We put the person in jail for 90 days. They were fined more than $13,000 and barred from ever working another election. That's pretty serious. Um, consequences. And when Dennis Richardson, our late and very conservative Republican Secretary of State, writes Donald Trump, a president I'm sure he voted for, and tells him fraud in Oregon is non-existent, that's a pretty good wake-up call to some of these Republican arguments. That's, that's fabulous. What, what are the major arguments you, you face with uh, essentially why, why are people, why are elected officials against vote by mail? Both why are they really and why do they say? Well, I, I think a lot of them are fearful that when people vote, they aren't going to vote for them. But <laughs> I come back to the history here. I was America's first United States senator elected by mail. First new senator in Oregon in 34 years. Last Democrat was Wayne Morris in the 60s, and I won in the 90s. And I tell people, by the way, Oregon also elected a second United States Senator that year. He was a Republican, Gordon Smith. So Oregon's first mail-in Senator was a Democrat. Oregon's second US Senator was a Republican. And then you'll recall, Oregonian said enough with all this silliness and just put it on the ballot. 
and uh, almost 70% said, we like vote by mail. It's convenient. We feel it's safe. We support the idea of more people having a chance when they're juggling jobs and like to vote. And so uh, I think those kinds of arguments are helpful. Probably the number one argument is that, well, Ron and the Democrats, they want to federalize elections. I'm not talking about federalizing elections. You know, polling booth isn't going to be run by the US government. We're saying that you're going to get mailed a ballot. You can vote by mail. And Article One, the Constitution, particularly outlines a role for the federal government in elections. Federal government's been involved in lots of issues relating to elections. It's how we got McCain-Feingold. And Mitch McConnell sure dislikes that. We have time for uh, maybe a couple more questions here. Um, I have a question from Bill Burgess and deferring to our Marion County elections chief. And Bill, thank you for being on the call. And um, there's a little bit more detail. Um, the CARES Act presently requires a 20% match. State and local finances are thought to be desperate with a 20% hard to raise. Is there any chance of deferring this requirement in order that Oregon can use some for PPE, PPE maybe excluding protective clo clothing, in, including protective clothing for election board workers that due to election integrity must work side by side in teams of two? Tell, tell, tell Bill, we're working to waive those you know, requirements and would like to give him more flexibility on what he uses it because he's trying to use it for election security. Some states just want the money and they're talking about just handing it over to one of these mobile voting apps or something like that. And that's another key part of our bill. We would ban these mobile voting apps. And I wanna tell everybody, KC, that I am so opposed to these snake oil salesmen selling voting apps that are mobile because if they have an open connection to the internet that is basically tight like taking an american ballot and putting it in the kremlin and so i really pushed hard and my colleagues agreed that uh we're not going to green light this voting over the internet and kim wyman the secretary of state uh, a republican from washington state has been as outspoken about this as i have Great, thanks. Um, and I've got to get to a question that was hovering over us long before the pandemic. How concerned are you with foreign interference with the election infrastructure and how should Oregon and the rest of the country deal with this? Well, um, for those that are home, they can read the, the report that was put out by the Intelligence Committee just yesterday. Uh, I'm on the Intelligence uh, Committee and uh, specifically the a committee found that the Russians had uh, interfered in the election. They found that the intelligence community showed that. And in my um, additional views, I pointed out that uh, Donald Trump can't say that was a hoax just because he's taken Putin's word for it. So I'm very concerned. I'm not going to get into any unclassified. I'm very concerned about the prospect of foreign interference in the 2020 election. And I saw just yesterday a news story about Trump and uh, Putin talking about all the wonderful things they were up to. And I find it interesting that he's opening up that front a few months before the election. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just one note, uh, all the questions have been, have disappeared from my screen because I am not in charge of it. They don't want me in charge of technical stuff. And this is a wise thing. The grassroots, um, the grassroots is in charge when it comes to the Democratic Party. Absolutely. And in terms of technology as well. Um, so, so what uh, I, uh, uh, the one thing I remember there, there were a couple questions about um, 
what kind of work are you doing with uh, associated groups like, uh, uh, say, the League of Women Voters, who will be getting their voters pamphlets out in, in a few weeks, um, and various other groups that are doing hard grassroots advocacy for vote by mail? Uh, KC, the, the uh, Democrats just put together, we have something called a, uh, a steering group. We just had an hour long session with Mark Elias, the Democrats, uh, premier election lawyer, a whole host of major civil rights uh, uh, leaders from basically every possible part of the, uh, of the country. So coordination is very extensive and uh, a couple of nights ago, uh, Senator Warren, Senator Klobuchar, myself, Congressman Hakeem Jeffries, wonderful, young, talented um, congressman from uh, New York. You might have remembered watching him during the impeachment uh, proceeding, handled his arguments so um, eloquently. Uh, congressman Jeffries, Sir Warren, Sir Klobuchar, myself, we all had a virtual town hall uh, on dec uh, at uh, Declaration for Democracy a couple of nights ago. And uh, I was in my office, in Washington, D.C., Dirksen Senate office, building two blocks from where I am now, and KATU followed it. So it's a shrinking world. Yeah, definitely. You know, all from our kitchens and living rooms and offices, apparently, too. Well, um, I am so thankful to you. We're all so thankful to you for, for putting this on. And um, are there any closing remarks? And, and before we get to any closing remarks, if, if we didn't get your question, Katie will provide a link um, in a moment that you can send a question to, and we'll try to get those addressed. There are a lot of questions, and they were kind of flying across the screen, then disappearing and whatnot. Again, technology. KC, I've got a lengthy closing address, you know, so everybody can sit back in their chair and they say, <laughs> I'm going to do one of those senatorial things, probably talk for an hour. <laughs> my, my closing address, dear friend, and to all the Democrats, is just thank you, thank you, thank you. The strength of our party has been our values and our grassroots. And I'm probably exhibit A in it. I became Oregon's first Democrat elected to the United States Senate in 34 years. And it only happened for one reason, is that Democrats in every nook and cranny said we want to have our values represented in the United States Senate. So I was the first, Senator Merkley came after me. So we used to have no United States senators were Democrats. Now 100% of Oregon's United States senators are Democrats. Didn't happen by osmosis. It happened because of UKC, all the wonderful people there who've been um, participating in this virtual kind of town hall on voting. And let's just put this in the to be continued department. I love the chance to always reach out. I'll tell you, I like it a lot better when it's in person. So let's plan to continue this like we always have in person again soon. Big thanks. Well, thank you so much once again, Senator. And I'm going to um, switch the baton over to Katie and Jonathan, who is behind the scenes with his technical hand that will show some web links to help help us out, all out on this process. Katie? Thank Great. You. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator. Bye. Um, great. Um, excellent. So yeah, Jonathan has a couple slides that we showed earlier. But if you go to uh, dpo.org slash national vote by mail, uh, you can sign in support. And then you can also um, you know, post it to social media send it off to all your friends, email them, Facebook message them, uh, do what you do out there in, in the social media world. Um, but yeah, just work to get the word out. Um, and also, you know, just after listening to this presentation and everything, um, we'll have a recording up on Facebook and everything too. So if you wanted to share that with friends in, especially in other states that might not know how 
vote by mail works and how secure and safe it is. Um, please, you know, share that out and use this, all this information as a resource to get the word out to uh, folks in other states. Um, thanks so much for being a part of this. Um, email me if you have any uh, questions or anything. And yeah, we couldn't get to everyone's question. We had a ton and a ton of people on. Um, so thanks so much and have a great rest of your day. Have a good day. Thanks, everybody.